Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Heart of Iron 4, the new order, last days of Europe, with me of Apollo Omega and the Empire of Japan. So this is the first intermezzo episode, and this one for 1963. I have gathered all the statistics that I consider relevant. If there's anything that you are missing in the following tables that I'm going to show you, please comment it uh, in you know down below, and I will add it for the 1964 edition. But for now, uh, we have four big categories. We have the countries in the co-prosperity sphere as the first major category. We have top 10 world economies as the second one. We have the global statistics and we have additional statistics. Um, I'm going to go through all of these uh, every January. Uh, we're going to keep adding um, you know, columns here to follow up on the various countries and see what's happening with them. I'm going to try to color code it as um, well to make it as easy as possible. And once there is a bit more stats, we can actually add even some uh, let's let's call it uh, graphs, but for now, you know, let's just uh, keep it in numbers because it's easy enough to read. So, uh, when we look at the countries in co-prosperity sphere, we can see that pretty much everyone, with the exception of Yunnan province, has grown. Uh, we have various levels of growth. I'd say that we, as uh, Japan, are in the middle. Uh, we started with 251.45 billion, and we ended up with 262.22 billion, which is a growth of 4.28%. That is kind of in line with what we expected, and we retain position number one in the gold prosperity. So I think we will never get threatened, honestly, but um, still, I decided to keep the position over there. Uh, Republic of China is growing pretty nicely at a steady growth of 5.45%, uh, uh, retaining second position, starting at 47.59 billion, uh, ending at 39.64, retaining second position. Same thing for Manchuria, which retains position number three, but it grew only by 2.1% from 34.78 billion to 35.51 billion. I think this was also reflected in the state of Manchuria that we read that the industrialization isn't going as fast as was expected and it is still fairly agrarian country. Now the state of Guangdong is actually growing uh, extremely fast, I would say maybe the fastest in the sphere uh, at nearly 10% with 9.76% uh, from 21.21 billion to 23.28 billion. Uh, it keeps on position 4, not threatened on either end of the spectrum, uh, about 12 billion lower than Manchuria, but about 12 billion higher than Azad Hind government, which is growing at 3.37%, so not bad, not great. Uh, it broke through 10 million from 9.78 billion to 10 point eleven billion. Indonesia is barely growing uh, with a growth smaller than one percent at 0.85 percent staying at position six uh, from 5.85 billion to 5.9 billion and Republic of Thailand is also retaining position number seven with a growth of 3.48 percent. Now the following countries are actually all uh, really bad when it comes to growth. Um, I consider it very slow. Uh, Philippines uh, grew by only 0.42%. Empire of Vietnam grew by 0.84%. The Union of Burma grew by 2.54%. And Yunnan province didn't grow at all. But still, what happened is that Burma uh, dropped from position number 10 to position... Uh, actually, uh, grew from position at number 10 to position uh, number 8. Uh, so this should be... Ah, okay, I have this reversed. <laughs> it should be the other way around. It should be... Okay, so let me just fix this real quick. It's gotta be the other way around. D minus G, and that way we'll see the differences here. Yep. 
So this is this is what we should see. So Second Philippines Republic actually dropped by um, a position, Empire of Vietnam dropped by a position, and Yunnan province dropped by a position. Well, Union of Burma actually grew by two. Still, it has a growth of only 2.54%, and the only reason why it grew was that everybody around it grew way slower. And these are really bad numbers, to be quite honest. Um, with inflation fairly high, um, you know, let's consider the regular inflation about 2-3%, to uh, they're actually lagging behind pretty severely. Uh, Guangxi grew by 2.55%, also not amazing. Jinshan administrative office grew by only 1.4%, really bad. But Mengyang United Autonomous Government actually grew by 5.83%, from 1.2 billion to 1.27 billion, which is pretty good. Uh, Guizhou Province and Seihoku Homengun actually dropped uh, by a position, uh, but it's not very fair because the provisional government of Malaya actually jumped over them because after the unification it gained quite a lot of extra territory which catapulted it from 1.04 billion to 1.26 billion, which on paper seems like a 21.15% growth, but you know, if you gain that much territory, it's easy to, to grow. So we'll see next year how they'll do, what's going to happen with them, and whether or not they are going to continue growing, because they might not. We'll see. Kingdom of Kampucha actually grew by 3.14%, um, Kingdom of Laos by 4.47%, and Nampo Guisekan by 2.69%. Now, I have absolutely no idea what happened in Amur. It grew from 0.13 billion to 0.33 billion, which in percentage is 158.02%. Now, Amur is one of the Russian um, succession states. So I checked and they have their own focus stream, which they're working through. So maybe that's part of it. They probably got huge boosts from factories, probably some refugee stuff. Stuff like that and to be honest I kind of didn't realize that we had one of the succession states in at the Gopers Park this year but we do and I would bet that that's gonna play a role down the line but we'll see Bhutan grew by 6.74 percent from 0 0.09 billion so roughly 90 million actually it was 89 million to uh, 95 million, which is a healthy growth of 6.74%. So generally speaking, the corporate party sphere is doing good, with the exception of Yunnan, Empire of Vietnam, and the Second Philippine Republic, and the Republic of Indonesia. But we know that something is happening there. Uh, we've had those reports of OFN um, weapon shipments and you know partisan activities. So I'm pretty sure this is gonna go south really quickly. Any growth there is actually more than uh, we, you know, are expecting. I would be ex expecting it to descend into chaos and civil war. Okay, the top 10 world economies. United States of America are actually growing extremely slow, 1.24%. Uh, they grew from 322.72 billion to 326.72 billion. So very, very slow. Uh, we, on the other hand, grew by 4.28%. We already know about that, which is a pretty decent number. Grosjean Manisha Sarajh grew by 1.93%. So if we keep this up, we truly are going to be the fastest growing and biggest economy in the world very soon. Hopefully. Hopefully. Because it might not seem uh, that, you know, close, but this is really not that much of a difference. If we actually keep this steady growth and they didn't, we might skip them by... 1971, 1972, and just jump over them. We'll see. Uh, Italy, or the Regno Italia grew by 1.73%, and United Kingdom by 2.53%. Uh, they're still far away from the uh, 100 billion mark, 
at 88.07 billion. So only four uh, nations now, uh, United States, us, Germany and Italy are in the 100 billion club. But you know, if United Kingdom keeps growing, we'll see. China is actually growing pretty rapidly, we've already seen that uh, over here at 5.45%. They're growing uh, fastest out of all of the top 10 uh, world economies, which is great because they're part of our sphere. Manchuria unfortunately lagging with 2.1%, but what can you do? And French state grew by 1.89%, really interesting. Uh, we had Argentina originally in the table, but they dropped off. Uh, they had 24.45 billion, uh, which put them on position number nine, uh, but they're no longer on the table. I think something happened and they uh, actually had a shrinking economy this year. So they were succeeded by Brazil at uh, position number nine. Brazil now has 25.85 billion. We don't know how much it had before, unfortunately, or how much Argentina has now. But it's going to be interesting to see if it comes back. And Iberian Union stayed at position number 10 and grew by 4.48% from 24.21 billion to 25.27 billion. Pretty nice. Global statistics. Well, Kind of interesting that the total world GDP grew by 2.63%. If you look at the fact that we grew by 4.28%, uh, we are growing at about twice uh, the speed of the world. Our total sphere GDP actually grew by 4.41%, which is really nice. Um, when we look at the numbers of uh, the world, it grew by about... What would that be like? 15, what's actually 1 trillion 554 billion, and then you grew to 1 billion 590. Okay, we can actually make the difference here just to see. So let's make it and uh, wait and see the difference. That's gonna be pretty good to see. Uh, wait, no, U minus U. So there's a difference of 40 billion here, of which 16 billion or 16.93 billion uh, was the growth of our sphere. So that's more than a third. That's pretty good. Pretty good indeed. Uh, what's kind of interesting is though, the total sphere trade grew from 17.19 billion to 233.59 billion, which is an unbelievable growth of 1,259% basically. Uh, I think this might be a you know mistake because the game didn't model it before, uh, but still, I, I double check these numbers before I put them here because that's crazy. Uh, sphere share actually grew by 1.63% in the world, so we had 24.6% of the total world, and now we have flat 25%, so quarter of the world's GDP lies in our sphere. Pretty darn good. Um, and the additional statistics, um, these are just some numbers that I find interesting, and I wanted to just go over them quickly. So total depth. Uh, that we had changed by 3.19 billion. We dropped from 260.51 billion to 257.42 billion, which is great. Uh, we know that we had a shrinking debt, but seeing it here is pretty good. The debt to GDP ratio actually dropped by over 5%, actually by 5.5%, from 103.6% to 98.1%, which is really healthy. I'm hoping that we can keep this up. Year with surplus, we started with a deficit of 10.75 billion and we're entering the next year uh, with 4.35 billion in surplus. So that has a difference of 15.1 billion in expenses. Pretty darn good. Year with surplus was uh, minus 4.27%, meaning we had a deficit of 4.3% uh, basically, and we have a surplus now of one6 six percent of our gdp that's a difference of near six percent really happy with that i know that you guys uh, are probably unhappy with me slashing so many expenses especially for research but look at what we've done in just one year 
production units. Uh, I actually felt pretty bad about that until I saw this. We started with 148 and we now have 154, so we have 16 extra production units. It might seem, you know, that we're losing them, gaining them, losing them, gaining them, but you can see here that we're actually in total numbers really growing, which is pretty good. Manpower or available manpower grew from 3.11 million to 3.9 million, so it's a difference of 0.79 million, really good. And the population of Japan actually increased by 3.22 million, from 113.77 million people to 116.99 million people. Unfortunately, poverty rate increased by 0.23% from 29.2 to 29.43%. I'm hoping that we can start battling this. There are a number of tools, but all of them are depending on our expenses. So we'll have to see. And here are the scores of uh, our, our competitors and, for, and of us. So the score of USA military increased by 9, and the score of USA economy actually decreased by 2, and the score of USA total dropped by 90 because, you know, of the Malayan crisis and so on. Score of German um, Germany uh, military, or German military, that should be here, that's a typo, German military, actually increased by 10 from 633 to 643. Uh, the score of German economy, on the other hand, dropped by 50, which is a huge drop from 336 to 286. Because their GDP keeps growing, uh, rather by 1.93%, I think they were probably hit either by an increasing debt, which led to lower, um, in lower, um, you know, confidence raking, which would in uh, effect increase their interest rate, which could very well end up in such a huge difference in score, or something else happened, and I don't know what. However, the total score of Germany increased by 66, and the score of Japan military we actually increased by 7, um, so it's good to know that we are in line with our uh, opponents, I mean, you know, it was just 3 units, uh, but we expanded them quite significantly, we're producing quite a lot of equipment, and we're gonna continue with expanding our military this year pretty heavily, because we can afford it now, with the fact that, you know, our GDP and... Uh, deficits and everything are looking really good so i'm feeling confident that we can uh, deal with it a bit more and our economy increased by whooping 31 points considering both usa and germany are shrinking uh, when it comes to score this is a huge success still our score increased only by 47 so you know total um, germany is growing much faster in score than we are okay USA had a crisis, uh, they're down by 90 points, but other than that, uh, nothing major um, was changed. We are still third. Now, approval in the House of Peers increased from 62% to 63.5% at the start of the year. Public approval increased by 6.5% from 45 to 41.5%. And the government stability increased from 62 to 73%, which also should be a percentage here. Okay, increase by flat 11%. So I hope you found this interesting. It's just an intermezzo. I really like the statistics. TNO is uh, way more focused on economy. And looking at this in such a perspective gives me a little bit more idea of what is going on. We're doing pretty good. I'm really looking forward to seeing what the 1964 numbers are going to be like if we can keep up our growth so high, our debt and, uh, you know, expenses, uh, you know, being slashed while the economy is going to increase. We'll see. But I'm mostly interested also in the score and what's going to happen because we're definitely going to be hit by a crisis soon. So thank you very much for joining me and I'll see you in the next episode.